Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. I'm Elisabetta, an Italian watercolor artist. I'm a bit of a nerd, I'm afraid. In any case, today we are diving into Cobalt Violet, which is the last chapter of our Cobalt adventure. I have already reviewed uh, the different Cobalt colors in previous videos and I will put the link in the description box below. So, without further ado, let's dive in and swatch these colors. In Cobalt Violet, just like in the other Cobalt colors that um, we have explored, like uh, Cerulean, Cobalt Blue, Teal, or cobalt green, there are different pigments that contribute to build up the family. And we have two siblings here. We have PV14 and PV49. We start with the most important group, which is PV14. PV14 is called cobalt phosphate. And uh, not all brands offer it because it's very, very expensive. It's one of the most expensive pigments uh, on the market. Uh, you know that my source of information is mainly hand print, so you can find all this info on hand print also, but on other websites as well, like uh, Winsor & Newton or Jackson's Art. So we start uh, as usual with the uh, Winsor & Newton. I like to start uh, with the uh, Winsor & Newton because for me, it's like a benchmark brand. So I can easily compare the following to this uh, Winsor & Newton. PV14, sorry, PV14, I was speaking Italian. PV14 uh, is a very delicate, uh, low tinting, should be granulating pigment. I have always used Rembrandt, especially in Sky, but um, I was curious to try out this uh, Winsor & Newton, which is also very delicate. It's, I have the feeling more pigmented than the Rembrandt, but um, let's see. It has a wonderful dispersion on water. Let me add more pigment here. It's so lovely, this color. I, when I started painting, I didn't use violet at all, but um, especially this type of delicate reddish violet, but then in sky, it's fantastic. I suggest you for clouds or sunsets that you try it because uh, with its uh, low tinting strands and its granulation it's wonderful it has a drying shift however so you'll see that it changes one once dry let's compare it to rembrandt okay this is rembrandt it's the one that i have used the most actually i can't open it And it has some binder issues, so wait a minute, I fix it. So when I find uh, when I find that the tube has some binder separation, which may happen, I don't think it's a sign of bad quality. And uh, I usually fix it with a toothpick. You know what? I used the one that I squeezed in my palette. Here you see I have some cobalt violet in my studio palette and uh, it wets so easily. This is the one that I use for skies from Rembrandt. It's even uh, less staining than uh, Winsor & Newton. You hardly see it but it's so delicate and i can tell you that in sky it makes wonderful clouds you see it's uh, perfectly nice from the pan it wets very easily i'm 
trying to add some mass tone here, but it's difficult to build up because it's so delicate. I'll leave it. Now let's compare those with uh, M gram. Always a PV14. I think I remember that when I swatched this in the first cobalt video, it was very pigmented. And yes, it's different. Those two are quite similar in hue, but this is much more pigmented and blue. It's much more bluish. As usual, it's a joy to paint with M gram. I think uh, it's the presence of uh, honey that makes it so soft and so enjoyable. There is some binder separating, but nothing terrible. I think I can handle this. And uh, it spreads. So doesn't have the same dispersion of, let's say, Winsor & Newton or even Rembrandt. But uh, it's soft. It's like, I don't know, it's like spreading butter. It's fantastic. And uh, it's also very delicate. Uh, it's not very staining. It's not, the tinting power is not very strong, but um, it's more pigmented than these two. It's slightly less granulating maybe, but it's lovely. It's more bluish. So I think that you can have both in your palette if you like violets, because one is more bluish and uh, the other ones are more reddish, despite the fact that they are both PV14. And then we have the sibling. PV49 is the only PV49 I have, and it is Daniel Smith. So, now, PV14 is called uh, Cobalt Phosphate. Um, it is currently known as uh, Cobalt Violet Deep, whereas uh, this is uh, known as Cobalt Violet Light, I think. Okay. Whoa! Uh, it's... Uh, to full these two. Okay, I'll fix it later. Put this in a pan. Okay, I have put uh, my extra Daniel Smith in a pan and I will put it in a palette, in a travel palette, which is a nice color to have in any case. And uh, let's watch it. I say that uh, the performance seems to be very similar to PV14, even more delicate, I think. I'm a huge fan of Daniel Smith usually. It's only very expensive here in Italy, so I don't... Uh, I just buy some tubes when I, when I have some extra money. I teach on Skillshare, so I... When I get my monthly royalties, I always invest a share of these royalties in watercolors. So all my money that I spend in paint, in supplies, in art supplies, come from my art. I am not funding it with my other daytime job. I'm just funding a watercolor with the watercolor, which I think is fair enough. So this is a very, very lovely version of Cobalt Violet. It's always a reddish version. It's incredibly delicate, it's lovely, granular, delicate. Uh, I think that this is going to be extremely satisfying if you use it in sky. We'll try later, maybe. And here, there are the four genuine cobalt violets that I have, and here I have hues. Why there are so many hues? Uh, because uh, from what I understand, these pigments are so expensive that most brands will just offer a hue in their range. Let's go to the hues. Okay, the first um, hue is uh, by Schmink. It's cobalt violet hue and it is PV 
62. This is too small to dig the brush in it. But as I always say, these small tubes of uh, Horadam, Aquarelle, Pashminke, they go such a long way because they are so pigmented. Schminke is fantastic paint. And uh, it's much more blue. It's definitely different. It reminds a bit of M. Graham Cobalt Violet, but uh, it's not really, uh, it has nothing to do with the other three. And uh, it's strongly granulating. This pigment, PV62, before it had no name and it was known under the mineral name which is strontium phosphate which in Italian sounds really bad it sounds like a very bad word so I have difficulties in pronouncing it but um, it's not genuine maybe but it's very beautiful and probably is the most granulating so far very strong granulation Actually, this PV62, it is also used in a super granulation range by Schminke. Hold on, I'll show you. Uh, yes, for instance, yes, I remember well, this Volcano Violet contains this PV62 and then we will swatch it here. Okay. Then we have exactly the same pigment, Cobalt Violet. By Lucas Schminke calls it Cobalt Violet Hue, but uh, Lucas just calls it Cobalt Violet to Cure, but it's the same pigment. They call it uh, Strontium Phosphate, they don't call it PV62, but it is the sa exactly the same pigment. How much I love these chunky tubes by Lucas. They have this great price point and they are usually very good paint. So let's see if the performance is similar to Schminke. The feeling is different. The dispersion on paper is maybe not as good as in uh, Schminke, but you know, maybe the paper was drier, it's difficult to judge. The hue is absolutely very similar. The price point is really favorable to Lucas. And, um, I think that Lucas is great paint, uh, both for artists or maybe advanced uh, beginners because it's artist grade. It's not the most fancy extravagant paint, but it's very well performing and the price point is so good. So I think it's a very good transition from student to artist range and I have some colors that that I'm very happy to use so you see um, the performance is maybe slightly inferior to Schminke which is correct given the price point the granulation is not so strong but let's wait until it dries but the hue is very beautiful and it's very very similar we go to Sennelier this tube that I have is called uh, Cobalt Violet Light Hue, so they declare that it is a hue. And they have PV16, which is uh, Manganese Violet, PR122, which is uh, Quinacridone Magenta, so they correct it with the magenta, and white, PW6. Let's see what happens here. Usually Sennelier is a joy to use because it's so oh, it's so easy to use, it's so soft, uh, such a great dispersion on paper. This is called Cobalt Violet, but uh, it's not really a Cobalt Violet. I think uh, the Quinacridon Magenta is slightly overwhelming. So here now we are judging not just the beauty of a paint, but it's a fidelity to the name, I think. And um, this is not a cobalt violet for me. But on the other hand, it's a beautiful color. 
It is very, very beautiful. It's very powerful. Let's say that if the main feature of cobalt violet is to be very delicate, low tinting, here we are completely in another domain, in another territory. This is very strong, very pigmented. So if I didn't know this was meant to be cobalt violet light hue, I would say this is fantastic paint, but uh, I don't think it's a good uh, replacement for cobalt violet. Still, I'm happy I own it, and I'm sure that I will find some uses for this. Uh, we will try them all in a sky later, just for a change. And then the last two are Old Holland. I forgot to write the name here, Old Holland. I will just put an arrow, Old Holland. This is Cobalt Violet Light. How pretty they are, the old Holland tubes. It's a really a shame that uh, there is no such thing as um, pigment uh, on the tubes. So you have to look at the code and then you go online and, uh, and then you check the uh, pigment uh, on online. So it's a bit complicated. There are some health warnings, like it says cobalt, contains cobalt, ammonium phosphate, because PB73 is a cobalt blue. At least they have some cobalt blue. There is PB73, which is a cobalt blue. PV, it's a mistake, it's not PB. PV23, which is um, dioxazine violet, a very rich deep violet, very pigmented. PV19, quinacridone rose or quinacridone violet, and PR 112, which is naphtal red, not a very light, fast red. But uh, let's see how it looks like. Old Holland, I usually, despite the fact that they use fugitive pigments, like in this case, it's fugitive, the red, um, it's usually nice because um, sometimes they have some binder issues, but the, the colors are beautiful. So maybe I should have bought the pants. So the, the color is very beautiful. This is really delicate. And then, I don't know if it is correct in English, but I like uh, this uh, cloudy texture that um, they have. Most uh, old Holland paint have this uh, flocculating almost uh, cloudy texture that is really really lovely i like it very much it's so pretty i'm trying to add some more but you know it's so delicate that it's not easy to add um, doesn't really layer it's very transparent this is more binder than color but in any case let me add from the pan Here is my Old Holland set. I have squeezed all my paints uh, from tubes here, so the binder problem should be over, overcome. And this should be the Cobalt Violet Light. I like to use them in a pan. Yeah, not big change. Still very low tinting, very delicate. I think that um, it's very pretty. Just take it as it is, as a very low tinting paint. It's the weakest, I think, in this uh, sheet, but it's still nice. But much weaker compared to previous ones. And consider it's four pigments. So if you are a orthodox of single pigments paint, mm, I don't think this is for you. They use a lot of multi-pigments paint, all the whole lot, but some of them are really pretty. I prefer single pigments when I can, but uh, no, nothing to do. I can't layer it. It's all it takes. It stays like this, but it's very pretty. Color separation is also very nice. I see a color separation and I like it. 
Then I have my last color in this series and uh, it's cobalt violet dark. It's exactly the same composition except for the red. So it's only three pigments, uh, cobalt blue, dioxazine violet and quinacridone violet. I squeezed the glissa. No binder separation. Wow, yeah. And this is very pigmented. The dioxazine violet uh, really shows in this one. I think uh, you had it here, but it was in a lower ratio because here you really see the power of dioxazine violet coming through. And uh, it's really lovely because the, thanks to the cobalt blue you get the fantastic granulation and the famous cloudy texture I was talking to you earlier. Very easy to spread on paper, just uh, moves so well on paper and I like this feature, I really like paint that moves on paper. So while we let this dry, we'll try some sky with this paint in this. Let's try it. So I have, um, I'm using this um, sketchbook by Paul Rubens, which is 100% cotton paper, cold, uh, um, cold press. And for sky, I'm using uh, this cerulean, which is, I think, from Senelier. It's my old stash. I'm not sure, but I think it's Senelier. I'm afraid this cerulean looks a bit grey on camera, but it's not, it's a beautiful sky blue. So, Winsor & Newton. Clouds. Beautiful. Now, I have to hurry because I don't want this to dry. Then I go with the Rembrandt. Rembrandt is more delicate, look at this. And it has some blue, maybe it's lifting, but I see some blue undertone. Okay, so this is Rembrandt. Very pretty, right? Very, very pretty. Now, hemogram should be more blue. It is. Ah, this is beautiful for a stormy, gloomy sky. Look at this. Look at the granulation. So beautiful. And Daniel Smith is very curious. Remember, Daniel Smith was very, very low tinting. But I think that you could uh, paint great clouds from Daniel Smith. Now we go to Schminke, the hue. A completely different effect, look at this. Here you had some pink and blue mixing, wonderful. I must say that um, probably you can use uh, this uh, violet for shadows, but for clouds, uh, I prefer the pink version maybe. Look at this. Now we have Lucas. It's easy to pick, it's easy to spot because it's so chubby. 
Hmm, looks nice on paper. Now, something very different, Sennelier. Oh, look at this. It's lovely on sky, this one. Great dispersion, even if the paper is getting dry. For the whole line, start with the dark. Very pretty. What do you think? The cloudy texture is wonderful on sky. Great fluctuation. And also the sky is made with cobalt color. So two granulating colors that are mixing is fantastic. And last, we have our Old Holland light. I think that uh, the red is a bit overwhelming. It's almost a light pink, not a great paint. You hardly see it. It's more pink than a cobalt. Uh, I don't know. So um, lovely clouds in the sky. And uh, I will see you in a couple of minutes when everything is dry. Now it's dry. I helped uh, myself uh, with the heating tool because I didn't want to wait too much uh, and uh, the light might change because I use uh, daylight usually, I prefer, than a lamp, but I'm prepared to change my mind about it. So now my paint is dry. A little recap, these are the genuine uh, cobalt violet. Uh, pigments PV14 123 and PV49. I think they're all very beautiful. I'm almost embarrassed to say that uh, the one I like the least in this case is M gram cobalt violet. But um, because in sky or it's different, it's blue. So this would be great uh, when used in uh, shadow. I think that if you use this with shadow, this is gonna be great because it's granulating and I love, love, love granulating shadows. That's why I often mix, mix my purples because I like granulating shadows. Uh, and here you have granulating shadow. These uh, three, the Rembrandt was my go-to and still stands out as a very beautiful one. It's even maybe stronger once dry than the Windsor & Newton. The Windsor & Newton had a much more evident drying shift than the Rembrandt. Look at the granulation of all of them. It's wonderful. Um, I think that Cobalt Violet is really beautiful. I learned to appreciate Cobalt Violet after seeing a uh, uh, video by Irit Landgraf, which is a YouTuber that I admire and follow very much. And she's a real fan of Cobalt Violet. She paints uh, flowers, things very different from me, but I love to use this in sky. And then we go to the hues. The hues are also very nice. Um, as I said before, the Schminke is probably the most beautiful because it's heavily granulating. It's blue, so it's completely different use from these three. But I love the granulation and I think that this for shadow is going to be a great, great violet. The Lucas version, uh, maybe it's my fault, I don't know. It's very nice in hue, but uh, greater dry and shift and uh, lower granulation, unfortunately. And I give a lot of importance to granulation. That's personal, that's subjective. So you might prefer the Lucas if you are not very much into granulation. The CNLA is, uh, it's not a cobalt violet. They call it cobalt violet, but they're completely um, wrong. But look at this, it's a wonderful color. I think that um, I'm falling in love with this. So um, I will cross the cobalt uh, cobalt label and I will call it a violet light because I think it's really beautiful. Um, doesn't granulate, but it does uh, move very, very well on paper. 
the old Holland, the cobalt violet light. Once dry, it's not so bad. It has a nice uh, color separation. It has a heavy granulation. I think it's very delicate, but it's not bad, actually. Whereas the cobalt violet dark, uh, I don't know, it's, it's a bit uh, disappointing compared to the other cobalt violets I have. It's a hue and um, granulation is not so obvious. Uh, it has some sheen here. And uh, of course you can use it, uh, it's, it's a purple. You can use it in shadow or in florals, but it doesn't have the charm that, uh, look at these, these are so charming. It's so poetic, so there is a lack of poetry, I think, and romance in this uh, old Holland cobalt violet dark. Okay, now our clouds. I start by saying that uh, in sky, I probably prefer the pinkish version, and the Winsor & Newton and the Rembrandt behave very, very well especially the Windsor and Newton, but once again, it might be human uh, mistake. Daniel Smith, uh, the, it's a bit weaker, maybe. M. Graham has disappeared in the sky. It's weird. So the Schminke is very nice because it's heavily granulating and it stands out against the Cerulean. It really stands out. And also Lucas is behaving well in sky. The Sennelier, as I said before, it's not a cobalt, but lovely clouds from the Sennelier. I'm going to use this a lot. And the two old Hollands, well, the old, the old Holland light that uh, when wet seemed to be absolutely useless, it came out with a nice peachy cloud. Look at this. I hope you can see it in camera, on screen. It's really lovely. It's a peachy, pinkish cloud very very nice and the dark also has a beautiful color separation so my recommendation is buy them all use them all no i'm kidding but it's true that once you see them you realize that the name doesn't say it all that you have to see them and decide what you need i think that i'm going to stick to my rembrandt and maybe once I finish it, I will replace it with Windsor & Newton and use Sennelier also. But um, one of these bluish purple Schminke or Lucas will find a place in my palette for darks. Okay, Old Holland, I will keep in my Old Holland palette where I only have Old Hollands. And I sometimes like to paint with this uh, set of uh, Holland because they have very unique colors. So. Okay, before I go, I promised that I would have swatched the super granulating Volcano Violet, which uses the PV62, impossible to open. I couldn't open it, so I'm swatching it from my super granulating palette that I have here by Schminke. So it should be a super granulating version. And now I will let you know the composition. But they use the PV62, this one, which is a super granulating color. That's a lovely violet. It's quite muted. And uh, so the composition is um, PB62, which is this um, super granulating uh, cobalt violet hue that they're using here, and uh, PR108, which is cadmium red. And the result of this combined with the cadmium red is beautiful. It's really wonderful, great color separation. I really love this uh, super granulating series by Schminke. So remember that maybe if you mix this uh, PV62 with a red, you get a very lovely combination. So these are my cobalt violet. Of course, this is not exhaustive, as I always say. 
and uh, if you have any lovely cobalt violet that we haven't swatched here please do let me know i'm sure you have it and um, that was great to to swatch it because um, i have a soft spot for cobalt violet so um, i'm very interested to know what you do with your cobalt violets and which brand you have so thanks for having watched this um, cobalt violet uh, chapter with me this puts an end to our cobalt adventure we started with um, an overview then we swatched the uh, cobalt blue all different cobalt blues cerulean blue cobalt turquoise or teal they're all cobalt colors cobalt green and uh, cobalt yellows py40 and um, i hope you enjoyed this adventure i'm thinking of uh, opening a new adventure soon in another family of colors i would be really happy if you let me know in the comment if you appreciate uh, this approach of uh, watercolor families i really appreciate that because it helps me to better understand colors and pigments if you have uh, some uh, wish about some color of family let me know thanks a lot uh, for having watched this uh, video with me i love to interact with my followers so any comment any question don't hesitate i'm happy to answer and uh, I'll see you soon. Thanks a lot. And uh, don't forget, if you like my videos, to subscribe to my channel. That would be really amazing. Ciao ciao from Elisabetta in Italy. Thank you. Ciao ciao.